here for this 60 second session of knowledge series organized by SGR Knowledge Foundation. I would like to first introduce SGR Knowledge Foundation as SGR Knowledge Foundation is a section 8 company. In this we are in society um, corporate social responsibility se related kafi activities in Nagpur. Mein karte hai. Saath hi saath, knowledge series jo hai, wo 2018 January 2018 में पहला सेशन हम लोगों ने यहाँ पे किया था जो मराठी था संजय उपाध्याय सर का उसके बाद से आज का ये जो सेशन है वो 60 सेकंड सेशन है SGR नॉलेज फाउंडेशन ने जो पहल नागपुर में की है वो है ऑरेंज सिटी लिटरेचर फेस्टिवल की जो हर साल नवंबर में होता है पहला ऑरेंज सिटी लिटरेचर फेस्टिवल 2019 में हुआ और अभी हम तो अभी ये जो नॉलेज सीरीज के सेशंस हैं वो एक तरह से ऑरेंज सिटी लिटरेचर फेस्टिवल का ही भाग है और अगला जो ऑरेंज सिटी लिटरेचर फेस्टिवल है उसमें इन सेशंस के स्पीकर्स भी आई होप शिरकत करेंगे एंड इन सारे सेशंस और लिटरेचर फेस्टिवल्स और कल्चरल प्रोग्राम इन सब में जो शुरुआ, शुरुआत से साथ में रहा है वो है चिटनविस सेंटर और हमारे जो सेशंस हैं वो चिटनविस सेंटर के साथ में एसोसिएशन में हुए हैं और वी फील प्राउड दैट चिटनविस सेंटर जैसा एक सेंटर नागपुर में है जहां पे हम मल्टीपल सेशंस प्लान कर सकते हैं और स्पीकर्स के साथ ऑडियंस भी कंफर्टेबली बैठ के सेशन एंजॉय कर सकती है बिना अपना पसीना पहुंचे सो थैंक यू सो मच टू द ट्रस्टीज ऑफ चिटनविस सेंटर फॉर कंसीडरिंग सच काइंड ऑफ सेशंस फॉर नागपुर एंड सपोर्टिंग दिस काइंड ऑफ एक्टिविटी I would like to thank Mr. Sunil Raisoni, who has thought about this kind of support to support this kind of idea. Because in the past, the Vyakhyan Mala was done at that level, the knowledge series was started with this concept. In which the basic concept is that people don't have to put any kind of charges on these sessions and eminent personalities directly. So, thank you so much to Mr. Sunil Raisoni also. आज का जो हमारा सेशन है वो सेशन थोड़ा अलग है अब तक के सेशन से हमने अभी तक बहुत सारे सेशन अटेंड किए हैं 62 सेशन में 62 स्पीकर्स आ चुके हैं लिटरेचर फेस्टिवल में अराउंड 275 स्पीकर इन तीन एडिशंस में आ चुके हैं आज का जो सेशन है वो थोड़ा डिफरेंट है क्योंकि दो ऐसी व्यक्तियां इस स्टेज पे रहने वाली है जो उनके उनके फिल्म में एक्सेल कर चुकी है। I'll just go on a different point. You must have uh, heard the concept. Almost everybody did flight traveling. So it is said that straighten your seat, fasten your seat belts, keep the tray table upside and enjoy your flight. As you hear this announcement inside an airplane, how do you respond when it turns out the captain or commander is a woman? Aisa kaha jata hai ki women is not a good driver. Well, when I drive a car, I most of the time face this problem ki main signal pe hoon aur ek do bar comments sunne aare wo ladki drive kar rahi hai zara dur se chalana. So, घर भी वो चला रही है, कार भी वो चला रही है, बच्चों को भी वो चला रही है, तो वो ट्रक और प्लेन क्यों नहीं चला सकती? So this is something which is to be to be feel proud. एक मोनोटोनी जो है, वो ब्रेक करने का जो काम किया है, वो आज की जो व्यक्तियाँ यहाँ पे बैठने वाली हैं, वो करेंगी। So I'll just go through a formal reading of the profile. So the speaker is, I am talking about our today's speaker, Captain Manisha Mohanpuri, who feels blessed to be a pilot, a profession that has made her what she is today, disciplined, focused, daring, fearless, and ready to take on any challenge that life throws at her. Having flown both Boeings and Airbuses as a commercial pilot with Air India, it gives her immense pleasure, joy to talk about flying and related topics. So that's why she is here today as a speaker with us. She is born in Kolkata, brought up in Bhopal and Chandigarh, and having lived in USA during flight training. Manisha has traveled extensively as part of her profession. Today, Manisha, after having 
taken voluntary retirement is a mentor to youth, uh, young children and helps them work towards achieving their goals and making their dreams come true. From Saris to Strife is her first book, which talks about the stories of such kind of personalities who actually broke the monotony. ऐसा कहते हैं कि अगर आप किसी एक्सपर्ट के साथ में बात करना चाहते हैं या उससे कुछ एक्सपर्ट चीजें निकलवाना चाहते हैं तो उससे बात करने के लिए एक एक्सपर्ट को ही बिठाना चाहिए तो ही आप जो उस पर्टिकुलर टॉक का मैक्सिमम चीज है वो निकाल सकते हैं आज के एक्सपर्ट ने मुझे पूछा था कि वाई मी सो आई वुड लाइक टू टेल हर वाई शी इज द मॉडरेटर ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर सेशन I'm talking about Flight Lieutenant Shivali Deshpande, who was commissioned in Air Force as a pilot officer for five years short service commission. She was in air traffic control, fighter control, uh, air traffic control, fighter controller branch, and worked as an administrative officer and was recognized for public speaking. She was recognized for public speaking. ये आपको अभी थोड़ी देर में पता चलेगा क्योंकि ये बहुत सारे सेशंस बहुत फ्लॉलेसली कंडक्ट करती है फ्लाइट लेफ्टिनेंट शिवाली देश पांडे इज अ फर्स्ट गर्ल इन द कंट्री हु कमांड अ पासिंग आउट परेड एट द एयरफोर्स एकेडमी व्हिच इज अ प्राउड फॉर नागपुरियंस शी इज अ डिफेंस एक्सपर्ट ऑन मेनी रिडाउंड न्यूज चैनल्स एंड वाज अ यूथ स्पीकर इन यंग टॉक्स यूथ टॉक्स नागपुर ऑर्गेनाइज बाय यूथ इंडिया she is called for motivation uh, she is called as a motivational speaker at various forums she is a founder trustee of prahar which is familiar and known name in nagpur and it is called prahar samaj jagrati sanstha and is a proud owner of numerous awards and achievement that's why i avoided reading the awards kyunki list bahut lambi thi otherwise we won't get time to attend the talk cause we are having two experts jinke bare mein agar padhne jaau to shayad aadha pawn ghanta wahi pe khatam ho jayega so i'm not taking much time now and will request neeta uh, kale ma'am to please welcome our speaker today captain manisha puri I request PRO Amit Gandhare to please welcome Flight Lieutenant Shivali Deshpande. And before handing over the session to expert, I would once again like. Jai Hind. Good evening to the audience. There is a very famous saying. The question is not whether they will let me in. The question is who will stop me. And that goes very correct. For this lady sitting next to me, who has really broken the glass ceiling. who has made her name not only as a pilot but as a mentor as a mother and as a child when she grew up yes i'm talking about captain manisha puri manisha ma'am you know the moment i spoke to her on telephone she said please don't call me ma'am i said no ma'am you're much senior to me much elder to me and i should call you with respect and that seniority does not come from the age it also comes from the experience so i'm much younger to you ma'am 
I don't agree, but thank you for giving me that kind of importance. Welcome to the Orange City, ma'am. Well, you see, uh, we are going to talk about your book, From Saris to Stripes. And um, uh, this book is an eye-opener. Eye-opener not only for the women, per se, but it is an eye-opener for all those people who want to dream big. The youth of the country who wants to really reach the skies, touch the sky with glory, as we say in the Indian Air Force. And, uh, you know, I would like to, when I read uh, your chapter, you know, I specifically concentrated on your chapter when this book was prescribed to me, uh, when I was invited to this program. And uh, Murnal literally pulled me in because uh, I was busy in uh, the camps of Prahar that we every year organize. And um, pardon me for my voice, otherwise my voice is very sweet. And this is only because of the camps. My first camp got over, my second camp is ongoing. And uh, I have to give lectures, I shout, I yell with the children, I enjoy with the children. And uh, especially because after two years they're coming out. And uh, they are staying away from their parents. So it's all the more hooray for them. When I read your chapter, ma'am, you know what caught my eye in the beginning was that you've written about your father. I do believe that girls are closer to their fathers. And I'm not only saying this because you were close to your father or I was close to my father. It is because somewhere girls look at their fathers as an idol, as a person who has imbibed discipline, as a person who signifies something called a success, as a person who signifies that he has really excelled in his field and who has done something great. So ma'am, can you share something about how your father inspired you? What was your relation with your father? How did his life drive you to become what you are today? First of all, I want to thank everybody who got me here. And I feel very happy sitting here today. This is my first trip into the city of Nagpur. Though in my flying career, I have overflown Nagpur umpteen number of times and have landed in this airfield a lot of time, both from Delhi and from Mumbai, but into the city for the first time. So I feel happy that I'm here and talking to all of you. Sitting next to me is a lady who was an air traffic controller with the Air Force. And I must say, what the foundation actually paid us was fantastic because a pilot is half without the air traffic controller. <laughs> so today also, I'm right here, radar victored by my air traffic control officer who has done my flights umpteen number of times. And I salute to the Air Force and armed services because during the years that we started flying in 80s and 90s, the airports, civil airports were not very well equipped with the facilities. And the airfields, when we went to the eastern side, which were mostly manned by the air traffic, Air Force air traffic, Bagdogra, Tejpur, Jorhat, Debrugar, even Bangalore at that time. And the kind of approaches we did in the worst of the weather condition, thanks to these people. We got you down on the runway center line with a smooth touchdown even in the heavy downpour, because we knew that the Air Force air traffic controller has ha had me on the radar, and I'm going to be safe on that runway. So really, those 80s and 90s, we have seen how the precision approach was carried out through the Air Forces. So we do salute them. We know the country is in good hands. Like she said, glory and Air Force, the armed service is a real glory. So I'm very happy. Thank you, I have my better half sitting here. Without this, the <laughs> aircraft cannot fly. We take permission for engine start from them and for engine shutdown from them. 
if they can hold us outside the runway and not give us the bay, we cannot touch shut our engines. So thank you. Grateful to And you, thank you for the lovely introduction. Coming to my book, yes, I've been in flying profession since the 1986, uh, breaking the glass door or the glass ceiling and entering a male-dominated profession was not easy at that time. But uh, post-retirement, even during my flying days, I had always thought one day I will write about this. I want to write about this to let people know that we never wanted any profession, we never want any profession gender-based. There is no men, women. If you are capable, you have the personality, you are who you are, you can do anything. And so the women have proved it since 1966 in this country. And when we heard Dr. Manalini talk about women driving on the street. Yes, we had questions from the passengers seeing us in the cockpit. And if you read my book, you will realize in 1990, a passenger got offloaded, got himself offloaded after seeing the women as the commander. He said, I refuse to go in this flight. What is the airline doing? Are they mad? And the captain said he doesn't even know what year of hardship I've gone through to be sitting here on this seat. He doesn't know the kind of training I've gone through to be sitting on this seat. But she took the delay on her and she said, let him be comfortable. He wants to get offloaded. So in the 90s, people were not comfortable and we are flying since 66. That was my reason. And now we come to your lovely question, because this is the first time somebody asked me in all the sessions I've been to about my relationship with my father and the learning from him. I lost my father. He was quite young. I was still studying. So he didn't even know what profession I will take later in life and who I would be. But he was an educator. He was director of education for Madhya Pradesh. And like uh, Flight Lieutenant Shivali said, those generation, that generation, we all looked up to our fathers. And uh, they were the guiding force. They were our backbones. They taught us. They Even seeing what they did used to be so good, how hard my father worked day in and day now. He was a government officer, so you know how government officers work. There's no time, you're called for a meeting, there's a minister, there's this file, a lot of files, paperwork was there, and we used to see it as we were growing up. And yet I always found him smiling under all circumstances. I've never seen a frown on my father till he was there. And I used to wonder, that so many times he's so fed. There were no mobiles, but the phones used to ring at home also, even after. Yet he would calmly talk. There was something called patience which we saw. There was something called calmness which we saw. And I think I took those qualities because my profession needs that. I need to be calm under the worst situation. I may have all my engines gone, but I have to be calm because I know my work is to bring that aircraft down in the ground, and that is when I need all our help. Because the air traffic control, when we are in emergency, if you have a good air traffic controller, he will tell you all the closest field around you. You will not have to mess around finding this or that. The weather, everything will be given to you within a minute. And she knows we work within minutes. If I do not give her a call for two minutes, I'm declared as lost. There are all sirens running from their side. So this is a profession which is actually a very, very uh, stressful, yet you need to be calm all the time. And I think that is one quality I took from my father. Because I would see him in the worst conditions, always smiling and being calm. 
And he was a disciplined man because I think when you're working in a educational department, you need to yourself be disciplined to be able to give education ahead. And I think these were the things I learned from him and it helped me when I grew up to become a pilot. Ma'am, you very aptly said, you know, that uh, when you become a pilot, you require that sense of calmness within you because you never know which situation you might encounter. Especially when you fly in the Northeast, you know, suddenly the weather might pack up. Suddenly the weather is clear. And suddenly anything might happen in the aircraft. So I read about an incident where, you know, you were into this kind of situation uh, where you were approaching to land and there was a, a pilot with you and there was a truck which was full of cotton and then the story went on. In fact, when I was reading this, that story, I had goosebumps because I could imagine what the situation in those times could have been. But apart from that, ma'am, you know, you've written this book in a very, very simple language, beautifully literatured, simple English, and it's very easy for everybody to understand, yet it's got the deepest of the emotions. And uh, so my next question to you would be, ma'am, what was your inspiration to write this book? You see, because especially when we in the forces, when we retire or rather when um, we take voluntary retirement from the forces, literature is, some, is the last option we would ever choose. We always love to work in the society, love to give out what we have learned in the forces to the people, tell their experiences to the people, you know, that kind of a thing. But then you ventured into writing something. Yes. Um, inspiration, like I said, uh, there were people outside civil society whenever I went out anywhere. And if they got to know I was a pilot, they would come and start talking. Oh, really? You are a pilot? You fly airplanes? I said, yes, that's what pilots are supposed to do. I fly airplanes. Oh, really? And then when I would tell them, oh, I've been flying for more than 25 years, they said, are you serious? Women are flying for so long? I said, yes, the first women in our country started flying in 1966, Indian Airlines. I'm sure none of you sitting here know, or even if you know, it's only 1% of this country that knew Captain Durba Banerjee joined Indian Airlines in 1966 how much she struggled, how much she fought, but she did not give up till she joined Indian Airlines. The book talks about it. So I wanted to write, and I wanted to write in simplest of English, because I wanted all generation to read it. I wanted this book to reach every school. I wanted children in every class to be able to understand. You see, everybody loves to see the sky and aeroplanes, even when we today see those, you know, the sound of the airplane goes, all of us look up and wow, we all wish we could be flying that. So it's a kind of a profession that does give people something to know about. They want to, and especially children. I have so many children I mentor because when they know you're a pilot, how can we fly? What can we do? So I wanted to put it very simple English. In fact, there were few words. I researched to find a simpler word for that. And being a technical book, in the sense flying is not something where people would understand if I write in the language that evasion is. So I had to decode many of this to make it simple stories to be enjoyed. And, I, and I wanted all ages. I mean, you and me could relate to many things, but civil society would not relate to many of our evasion words. So that is why the book is kept simple. And I'm happy I found a publisher who agreed to keep it the way I wanted. Simple, to be read by everybody. 
So the inspiration came to let people know about women in this field. And the other inspiration was, I wanted to let people know gender, we never made it a gender profession. We were capable, we flew, we had license, we knew we can perform. And since 1966 till today, women have handled all emergencies. They have flown all aircrafts from the jumbos to the Boeings, to the latest 787 Dreamliners. They have shoulder to shoulder went every airfield, whether it was the most critical Leh Ladakh or Mangalore or Dibruga, Tejpur, where the weather can change within second. I may have taken off, and when I come back, it would be a different airfield. Absolutely. So, you know, that was the main inspiration. And I'm very happy the civil aviation minister, Sindhyaji himself, launched this book because he loved the concept of people getting to know these stories. Superb, ma'am. Ma'am, and women have been flying jumbos and now women are flying fighter aircraft yes, as well. Yes, yes. So that is a very, that very proud not. moment. And you know, I want to add in here, even today, we are number one in the world, maximum number of women flying commercial airlines. We are 15 to 18 person, wherever world over it's only seven to 10 person. So people doesn't, didn't know, and this is why my book has come up. I want them to know, we have been there. It doesn't matter, you don't have to be on the advertisement every day. You need to perform and work. And that's what we did. And I don't know about the roads. I'm sure the roads are also safe with women drivers. <laughs> the air is safe with women flyers. That is for sure, I would tell you. <laughs> Wonderfully put by you, ma'am. Aapke is jawab se ek bhoot achcha mujhe hindi ka ek shir yaad aaya, ma'am. Jaysay bachcho ko hum kehte hai, na? And this is specially for the parents, you know. Bachcho ke in nanne haato ko चांद सितारे छूने दो, चार किताबें पढ़ लिखकर, वरना वो भी हम जैसे बन जाएंगे। So, you know, when we say that children should touch the skies, reach to the glory, do we really mean it? क्या हम वाकई में ये सोचते हैं कि हमारे बच्चे ने कुछ अलग करना चाहिए, या हम यही सोचते हैं कि हमारे बच्चे ने वही प्रोफेशन में जाना चाहिए जो एक stereotyped profession hai aaj ki dunia mein either engineer or doctor or business or government service nothing more than that i mean even in the armed forces as ma'am very you very rightly said apne gender ke bare mein bahut sundar kaha tha mujhe aaj yaad hai ma'am academy mein mera pehla din hamara pehla din hum ladkiyan the aur hum ladke the humko fallen kiya gaya aur hamare jo chief instructor the wo hamare samne aaye और उन्होंने हमसे पूछा कि क्या आप लड़कियों को थोड़ा सा लीनियन ट्रेनिंग चाहिए जो हम लड़कों को देते हैं उससे थोड़ा सा लीनियन ट्रेनिंग चाहिए तो अब हमको पूछा गया वो भी लड़कों के सामने तो वो एकदम यू नो हमारे स्वाभिमान को चोट पहुंचाने वाली बात थी तुरंत हम सब लड़कियों की मुंह से निकला कि नहीं नहीं हमको वही ट्रेनिंग चाहिए जो लड़कों को दिया जाता है एंड देन ही वॉज वेरी हैप्पी अबाउट इट एंड ही सेड कि आज से आप भूल जाओ कि आप लड़कियां हो आज से लड़कियों का और लड़कों का एक ही आपका डेफिनेशन है और वो है परिचय है और वो परिचय है कि आप भारतीय एयरफोर्स के आप सैनिक हो दिस इज द ओनली प्रोफेशन सो जेंडर इक्वालिटी ये जब हम बोलते हैं तब हमने अंदर से उसे फील भी करना चाहिए और गर्व होता है ये बताते हुए मुझे मैम कि एटलीस्ट इंडियन एयरफोर्स में एंड आई एम वेरी श्योर इंडियन आर्म फोर्सेस में भी हम लेडी ऑफिसर्स ने कभी कोई स्पेशल प्रिविलेज नहीं मांगा है क्योंकि हम लेडीज हैं एंड हमने इन आर प्रोफेशन इन द एयरलाइंस इंडियन एयरलाइंस वाज़ द ओनली एयरलाइंस एट दैट टाइम दैट ओपन द डोर्स वी हैड ओनली इंडियन एयरलाइंस एंड एयर इंडिया एयर इंडिया वॉज नॉट रेडी इवन देर वी नेवर आस्क फॉर एनी स्पेशल यू नो whatever 
uh, that we will not do this training or that, whether it was midnight 12 year simulator or 1 a.m. or 3 a.m., we did it. We've handled all the emergencies. There's nothing that we were given less training or that, you know, oh, she's a girl, so don't give her single and no way. So it was at par. And this profession, you cannot. Once in the air, it's solely managed. This is the only profession where uh, the teamwork is only on ground, but in actual aircraft, if there is an emergency, one pilot handles the airplane solely on his, himself. Like Absolutely. police and fire and all, there's a team which can assist him, but you handle it alone and bring it on ground safe. Absolutely, ma'am, absolutely. You mentioned kiya tha, uh, Air Force ATC, ke baare mein. you know, uh, the radar vectored precision landing aircraft. So can you uh, tell a very special incident of yours when you were flying and when you came across the Air Force ATC and you were like, hush, okay, now I'm in safe hands. Yes, I must tell this incident. And uh, when I learned about her to be today with me here, and I thought I would share this. We have flown to many um, Air Force airfields, you know, mostly all the East India are Air Force manned. Uh, when we cross towards Punjab and we used to go to Leh, Jammu, we were very close proximity with Pakistan border. And we have brilliant Air Force ATC man 24 seven there, Northern Control and Alpha Control. So in bad weather, landing in at Amritsar, even a slight wrong turn can get you into Pakistan. And once you are into Pakistan, you had it. They don't spare anybody. And we would have Alpha and Northern get you out immediately, even if they would see our wing getting turned to that degree. You know, they would guide you off the weather, but they will guide you within your Indian country. Similarly, during Bagdogra, that belt is yes. so narrow between Bangladesh here and uh, Bhutan here, and they would really guide you in. But here I will share an incident of Bangalore. Bangalore new airport is very recent. Our years we have landed in the Air Force uh, airport, which is the old airport, which you all may be knowing. Civil air aircrafts used to come in. And this was a very tough flight that day. Um, I left home at about four in the afternoon for a, you know, a 6.30 flight. Once I reached the aircraft, there were multiple snacks which were overlooked, and I refused to take the aircraft from base, Delhi, and I said, everything has to be rectified. I'm doing a night flight. I have a full load of passengers. I'm going into southern India, was totally covered monsoon, and I said, I... So it took them a lot of time until 9 p.m. We were getting the aircraft cleared. 9, 9.30 we took off, so by the time we were coming in with bad weather over Nagpur, everywhere, once we were heading towards Bangalore, Bangalore was dancing with lightning. <laughs> there was lightning all around the airfield, and I said, oh Lord, you're now at midnight, after all that, diverting to Chennai, flight duty time limitation, and there the poor passengers are going to cry all night. So I was hoping I have a great precision radar by the Air Force and have my aircraft down on ground. And sure enough, even though if you, you know, you've never been into the cockpit window, your windows are too small, you never see the dancing lights of the lightning. Um, you know, they are really like disco lights. And they come close to your window and, uh, you know, but don't worry, they don't touch the aircraft. The aircrafts are very safe. No lightning ever touch it. So seeing the entire airfield, my co-pilot was also wondering, ma'am, are we going into Bangalore or should we, should I ask for diversion? I said, no, wait, let's connect to Bangalore ATC and we'll know where we are heading. And as soon as I got in touch with the radar of Bangalore, 
and he said, um, I see flight so-and-so, you continue approach. Bangalore has weather all around, but I have you under radar, and I'll give you a precision approach radar vector for the runway to come from the better side where you'll be cutting most of the weather. And that is what we needed at that time. When you've handled through the route weather, you've had emergencies on ground, and beautifully, the aircraft was coming in, and you know, Air Force are used to multiple aircrafts coming in and going because the uh, fighter planes are, don't come in with the distance like the civil plane comes. They come in with the distance together. So while I was radar vectored very nicely and I knew I was managing the weather, coming in, I was close to two miles short of the runway to touch down. He gives line up to the Air Force aircraft to get airborne immediately before the weather packs up. <laughs> and I said, what this guy is planning to do? Am I going to divert now after having a wonderful approach? While he gives the line up, he tells me, you continue approach, runway will be available to you. He tells his aircraft to hurry up. There's an aircraft two miles, and I want runway cleared. This is how Air Force work. They have so much precision within them, between them, and how they handle aircrafts in the worst of the weather. I was one mile short of finals. The aircraft's wheel were going up, and I got landing clearance, and I touched down beautifully. And I think the smoothest touchdown, I'm sure passengers loved my landing that day. This is how relaxed we get. A good landing is when you are so relaxed, even in the worst of the weather. And so, all the service Air Force has given the civil airports. Today, there are very few because most of the civil airports have gone off in big cities. Pune used to be one, another major one. Correct. So, we, we must say the armed services and Air Force have a standard much above any of us, whichever field we work in. And thanks to the discipline, they are grilled in from the day they join. True, ma'am. And this profession, flying, is one profession you are drilled in the same discipline, otherwise you can never perform there. And that is why we go hand in hand. Yes, ma'am. Very correct, ma'am. Very true. Ma'am, I'm very sure that in your entire flying career, you know, you might have undergone through many stretch stressful situations. I remember reading a story uh, about a broken window. Yeah. You know, that, that passenger was... Yes, ma'am. And that was the time ke jab aapne mentioned kiya tha ki I learned calmness from my father, which was very necessary to become a successful pilot. So, ma'am, can you throw light on this? But how do you handle stressful situations during flying when you encounter certain emergencies suddenly on board? And especially when it is pertaining to any special passenger who complains about something on the aircraft. It's a very good question because, uh, you know, while you all are sitting here, it's not like we want to criticize. But we want people to know, and through this book, there are a couple of incidents about passenger interference. Because, uh, you know, it's like if you're sitting next to a person driving, and if the person is not driving the way you would like to drive, you're always correcting. But the person who's driving knows that he's going through the traffic correctly. And I don't need the so much interference and I can perform better than what you are saying. And it's the same thing. We must leave each profession to the professional. We have no right to interfere unless we know what that profession is. There are many incidents in these books where most of my colleagues have mentioned this is one of the major thing in, I wouldn't say only in our country, people abroad also do. So Indians are blamed for nothing. But yes, Indians never follow instructions. 
How many of you sitting here ever heard the cabin announcement completely? I'm sure not even once. But today I must tell you, please do it. It's for your safety. I was involved in a Boeing accident where the aircraft had to make emergency landing immediately after takeoff. We had major aircraft damage where we could not even turn back to the runway. So the only barren land we could see, we had to make a landing there. And when the aircraft is not coming on the runway, then there are obstructions of electric wires, trees, et cetera, et cetera. So your aircraft is damaged, broken into pieces since it was a after takeoff. I knew we have eight tons of fuel and the aircraft will go up in fire. During that time, we didn't know, but post that accident inquiry, we learned that some of the passengers could not be saved because they were not able to unfasten their seat belts. Because unfastening seat belt require metal clip to go up and only then. If you try to pull it, it will not because it's for your safety again. In a reject takeoff, the seat belts cannot open. Otherwise, you'll break your back. So following instructions is one thing, but if you've not heard the instruction, how do you follow? So it is very important to follow those instruction five minutes. Post that aircraft, it has become mandatory for cabin crew to make the announcement how to unfasten the seat belts by showing it. And that is why you see it today. Having said that, I will come to your question. Yes, this calmness come because we are trained for that. And it becomes part of our personality. The second thing, how the calmness come is because everything in our profession happens within a minute. My accident was over in a minute and a half. In that minute, you have no time to even think anything but to perform. You have checklists to do. You have to follow the instruct your standard operating procedure to be able to bring the aircraft down. So you automatically develop that kind of nature. During the course of nearly 30 years in this profession, you know, my daughters also fool around with me and say, Mom, you know, you're too disciplined. You're too calm. I said, what to do? I mean, I was in a profession which I loved, and it helped me become a good person because I'm happy I'm calm. Even in the worst situation at home, I mean, that same Bangalore incident, after I landed at 12 midnight, I saw six mixed call from my home. And I wondered what my husband desperately needed me for that evening of that day. But minute I switched on my phone, I got a call. Because my daughter, who I had packed up for to go to play, had a fall and had broken an arm. And he didn't know what and how he could make her actually not cry and calm down. So I said to him, don't worry. Now let her sleep. You take her first thing in the morning. So this is how your nature becomes. You have to handle an emergencies in everywhere. Like she said, whether we are driving on the road or we are managing our children or the family, we do it. Juggling becomes part of our nature. Which woman doesn't do it? My mother did it. I'm sure all women sitting here do it. And so this nature, what, you know, make us what we are, I think it helps us to be calmer. In my profession, I've seen as a commander and even as a co-pilot, many a time my male colleague would not be as calm as I would be in under the same circumstances. So it's a quality I think we get it or it's, it just comes within us. Correct, ma'am. Very true. Uh, I wanted to specifically ask you about stressful situations in the aircraft and that broken window yeah. incident. That incident, I'll say, you know, uh, 
professional should handle the profession they are doing. And we have many a time passengers sitting and they have only half information or they just pretend they know. So this incident, what she's talking about is a flight from Delhi to Mumbai. And those days there used to be a lot of traffic, a um, lot of congestion, a lot of delays. There would be, you know, 50, 50 minutes of delays on ground and in the air. So fuel used to be very tight because we used to be taxi holding before departure and we knew when we would land Mumbai, it'll be traffic time. We'll be holding around Mumbai for good 40 mi uh, minutes before our turn for landing. So we used to be very calculative on every um, little bit of fuel also wastage was not uh, acceptable. And here you get airborne and uh, you're not even ever safe altitude where you put this seat belt sign off, uh, cabin crew keeps giving me a call inside the cockpit through the in interphone which we talk. And she kept telling me there's a passenger who is, you know, disturbing us by calling us continuously. So I told her, I said, you stay put, seat belt signs is on, we are in weather, don't disturb me and don't attend the passenger. There's nothing emergency. And so it continued till we came out of weather and I put off the seat belt and uh, she, um, you know, again called me and she wanted to come inside the cockpit to tell me about this passenger. And, uh, you know, sitting in the seat where he was, <clears throat> there is this window which you all have. There are these shutters that, so the window pane has this frame which was loose. And whenever he would touch it, it would move. But that doesn't mean the window is broken because it's a cosmetic frame around it which only allows the shutter to go up and down. So he kept telling the cabin crew, tell your captain to land back because the window is broken. <laughs> and uh, I told the cabin crew, I said, just tell him if there is any vacancy, tell him to shift. She said, ma'am, flight is full, there is no seat. I said, okay, if any passenger is willing to exchange, move him from that window seat, make him sit on the aisle or somewhere. Where... But he was not satisfied. He wanted to meet the captain. Why captain is not landing the airplane? So when we were at a comfortable cruising altitude, he sent his visiting card. And the visiting card wrote that he was a professor in a very eminent university. And I thought, oh, he's a very you know, professor, educated <laughs> person. So I said, okay, bring him in the cockpit. I will tell him, Ki, sir, everything is fine. The aircraft pressurization, we are monitoring. We have no warning. And as long as cockpit has no warning, anything in cabin is cosmetic. Nothing will go wrong. But when he came inside, it seemed he was not happy to see a woman sitting in a commander's seat. <laughs> he got even more <laughs> agitated. He said, you don't know what you are doing. The aircraft should be landing. I said, sir, we are overflying Jaipur. Now I'll take you and land in Mumbai. He said, no, I will do this and I will do that. So I thought the guy is not ready to understand that there is no emergency. Everything is safe in the aircraft. So I told my cabin crew to take him back. In that flight, he somehow managed to convince a young guy to become a reporter, take few pictures of that window pane, and since, unfortunately, Indian Airlines and Air India always consider that they don't perform. So they wanted to make it as a report that the airline, you know, is flying with broken windows. And they kept disturbing the cabin crew. So finally, we took a decision when we were approaching into Mumbai, we asked for security because my cabin crew were fed up with these two people. And sure enough, we handed them over to the security for them to explain because the young boy was going for an interview and he was not a reporter, which he told them that I was NDTV reporter. Oh my God, oh my God. So you know, I mean, there is, this becomes an unnecessary emergency on board. Handling a passenger 
who is disturbing the cabin and the cockpit together. And you know, you have to handle your weather, you have to handle maybe an emergency of different kind which may not be too loud in the sense it doesn't require an immediate landing, but there are many things that keep going in that cockpit. You need to be vigilant. So these kind of things do come up. And all of us are trained to calmly make them sit through the flight because in the air you can do nothing. We cannot open any doors and we cannot make any unscheduled landing. It doesn't happen. It's not so easy. You may see a runway, doesn't mean I'm allowed to land there. We need permission. We need clearances. You just can't turn and say, oh, I will land here. No, this doesn't work in aviation. It is all planned well in time, maybe a day in advance for civil aircrafts. That's why we are so many up in the air, because each go up with a planned flight plan. We cannot just plan and say, oh, now I feel like turning here and I will land here. No way. So it's not easy to divert. If I have to divert, I have to take permission from not one, two, or maybe three air traffic controllers. Whether I have permission to turn, and she would tell you how much traffic is there, sometimes you cannot even turn. Because there's a traffic on right and left and you cannot turn. So while passenger might think that runway is going and you can land, he doesn't know I cannot. I need permission to land. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, incidents like this uh, do give you a lot of experience. Oh, yes. And uh, I'm very sure, very um, beautifully put by you, that, uh, you know, when we drive on roads, it's very easy for us to just get off the road and halt yeah. at any time, at any place, mm. if we feel so. And similarly, uh, like passengers feel, you know, that immediately the flight should be landed. So it's very easy to land at any airport that they see. People used to ask me the moment I joined the ATC in the Air Force, they said, oh, so you're a policeman in the air. In the air. You know, you're a traffic police in the air. So, you know, I, I had nothing else to say but to say yes. Yes, I'm a traffic police in the air. That is what, what I do. Ma'am, uh, in your book, you've spoken about young lady pilots. And young lady pilots uh, who've really done pretty well. They too have faced a lot of challenges. And I've uh, gone through a chapter, especially of uh, the two daughters of Captain Devi Sharan, yes. who was a pilot of IC-814, which was taken to Kandahar, the yes. hijacked aircraft. Yes. And uh, their story is really very, very inspiring, very wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I think that all uh, aspiring lady pilots or uh, girls who wish to become pilots should go through this entire book, because there are stories that Ma'am has put in her words about lady pilots, challenging stories beautifully put, and stories that really give you goosebumps. Yeah. So Ma'am, if you could throw light on, you know, how these young lady pilots are making their mark in this millennium, and I guess it was uh, two years back or a year back when we heard of an all-lady crew aircraft uh, that flew from North Pole, North Pole to, yeah. Breaking the world. you know, it, it, they really broke the glass ceiling and uh, they made big in the news. Yeah, but I want to correct here that you heard now because today uh, social media makes it, you know, reach every part of the country and the world. But we make the world record since 1985 in India. The first all-women flight in India was in 1985. And can you imagine the sectors? Leela Bari, Johar, Debrupur, the most trickiest. It's easy to land at Los Angeles or Bangalore or Delhi than to land at Johar, Leela Bari, and Debrupur. True, true. Ask true, her. True, ma'am. You know, those are Victor Mike field on a jet aircraft. When you have to see the airfield, you have to know what you are doing. You have 
trees on one side, mountains on one side, weather on one side. You have no aids available whatsoever. We have flown under conditions where our aircrafts had no aids, where our ground had no aids, but we made landings. And these are women pilots I'm talking of. So the first women flight we made was in 1985, but nobody talked about it, nobody did. Since then, every March, 8th March, we are making all women flight since 1985. Captain Zoya's flight, which was talked about, the yes, North Pole, that again women pilot have made the history in the world because that's the first flight of all women which has come over the North Pole. Now, why suddenly North Pole becomes a world record? Because flying closer to the polar regions have a lot of effect on the aircraft. And so closer to the magnetic field, we have many problems that can arise to the aircraft. That is why aircrafts don't fly close to the pole. To make it the shortest route, this flight was done. Since it was the longest from St. Francisco to Bangalore, to get the fuel in place, the shortest route was coming via the poles. And the challenge was taken by our director of flight safety, who was also a woman, Captain Nivedita, who's part of my book. Captain Nivedita was the youngest girl in the world in uh, 1989 when she was 26 years old when she got command on a Boeing. So this book covers many ones which women have gone through from the 66 to the millennium. The book starts from the 30s, how women have started and goes up to the millennium. The story she's talking about, I'm sure most of you know that we had our aircraft hijacked by the terrorists to Kandhar. Captain Devi Sharan was in command. Uh, I was also flying that day. I was doing a Bhubaneswar Delhi and he was coming in from Kathmandu and we realized in the air that something amiss. There's something wrong with Devi's flight. Uh, but those days, you know, facilities were very, very less. The radar was not there on board the aircraft. Post that, the radars have come onto aircraft. Um, but the flight actually could not be stopped in Amritsar, where he did a very good job of bringing the aircraft down first. And then, since the government could not plan how to get hold of the terrorists, it finally flew. And it, they wanted it to land at Lahore but it was not allowed, and so it went to Dubai, and Dubai did not want the aircraft, so it came to Kandahar, and that was their final destination. The terrorists wanted the aircraft in Kandahar or in Pakistan. Anyhow, um, the story about these two girls, Diksha and Ashna, Captain Diksha and that Captain Ashna, were seven and 11 years old when Captain Devi Sharan's flight got diverted to Kandahar. You know, when I met them and asked them to be part of my book, the idea was to have the Millennium Girls come in and girls who were seven and 11 years, when their father's flight went to Kandahar and did not, they did not know whether he will ever come back or not. Nobody knew. Diksha was 11 and Ashna was seven. And Ashna told me, ma'am, at that time, I did, did, did not even know what hijack meant. But I saw everybody coming and crying near my mom. And I was wondering why would they cry and my mother was not crying. So the two girls did not break down. Along with their mother, they were sure that Captain Devi Sharan would bring back the passengers, bring back the flight to India which did come back after an ordeal of 20 days. So post, as they were completing school, they announced to their parents that they wanted to become pilot. And Diksha says, when my father came back that night of 31st, and I went to receive him to the airport, the way I saw him lifted by the passengers, like a hero, with his cap on his head, I had decided this is what I want to be when I grow up. 
And when she was in class 12, she told her parents that I want to be a pilot. And I really feel parents play a big role. Devi Sharan had himself gone through this experience. And his wife, along with that, because she did not know whether her husband would be back home soon or not. But they encouraged both their daughters, and they are the first two sisters flying as commanders today, one in Air India and one in Indigo. So these kind of stories I've written, and that's why they have to be simple, because I want children to know, I want everybody to know, that gender was never there. It's Absolutely. us who wanted to be what we were, and we did what we did. And so all of you, at any age, no age, no gender, we can do. I mean, we hear of people at 70 and 80s doing so much. Because of social media today, we know. So we should have ourselves focused, knowing what we want, and just go for it. This is what I want to give through this book, and through, of course, the stories of pilots. Ma'am, I'm very sure that in your entire flying career, you know, you might have encountered situations uh, which have taught you, given you a lot of experiences, which have been memories for life, and certain beautiful memories, certain memories which might be etched in your minds with a lot of emotions. Ma'am, can you share some of those beautiful memories of your flying experience with us? Yeah. Uh, a flyer is always a flyer. Even today, even if I don't fly, my eyes are tuned to see an aircraft go. You might be seeing stars, I see few aircrafts there. <laughs> Those are the eyes I feel blessed as a pilot. Memories are not only of emergencies. Memories of the lovely experiences which we have felt from our heart and seen from our eyes. The, the power with which we take the aircraft up, it's so beautiful. The feeling of getting airborne is just amazing. My first flying school day feeling is still with me. And I, that was the first experience. I just got scholarship by luck and it changed my life. I knew this is it. What a feeling. And then we are like a little bird up there. We can look down, but you don't know who is looking at you all. So, you know, it was a feeling that we could actually be birds. Uh, we learned flying from the birds. The aircrafts came up because of seeing birds fly, and that, that's how the aircraft got designed. Though for a pilot, birds are not friendly today. <laughs> yeah, if bird hit my engine, I know it's gone and I'm left with no engine. So, though we learned flying from them, we tell them to stay away from us. So we have some beautiful, I've, I mean, I have seen the best of the rainbows, the best of the sunrises, the sunset, people travel miles. I would see a beautiful sunrise every morning flight when I left off, and I would say, oh wow, I'm so blessed. The things I've seen, I'm sure none of you can even imagine. I mean, the sky is overcast with clouds. I mean, if a passenger would come into the cockpit, would got scared. Oh, what's the captain doing, you know, sitting and having tea and look at the clouds. And I knew the minute I take my aircraft up there, I will see that beautiful sky full of lovely stars. You know, this is like, you can only imagine in science fiction, but I've actually seen it. And I made my husband sit once in the cockpit and I told him, I said, you, you see nothing? These are clouds, not water, huh? These are clouds. And minute I'm gonna get you out of this, you see beautiful sky with the stars you can never see on ground. And he actually told me this is like science fiction. I said, no, this is reality. 
and I'm lucky I can see it, you don't. And then another thing which I can boast actually, Shivali, is my office is in the sky. <laughs> my cockpit is my office. And this is the only profession I don't bring it home. When I pick up my flight bag at the end of the day, my work is over. I park the aircraft, say goodbye to it, and see you in the morning, but my work is over. My husband is all the time mad at home with the phones. <laughs> and I'm happy at home because I have no work at home. And I, when I go for work, I'm enjoying because I see beautiful sunrise, sunset, moonrise, stars and rainbows. So I think it's good memories that I carry till today. And I think till I live. Absolutely, ma'am, absolutely. From saris to stripes, what next? From saris to stripe is the caption where I have bought the lady, first lady in the 30s who flew in sari. Keeping the Indian tradition, we have reached the skies. And the next would be stories from my office in the sky. Superb, ma'am, superb. What else can we uh, dream to get from Captain Manisha Puri? Ma'am, it has been a wonderful experience talking to you. And um, I'm very sure that uh, ma'am has inspired many of us and many of the young girls sitting behind. You will surely dream to become a pilot in the Indian Airlines and uh, touch the sky with glory. Ma'am, it's been a pleasure. And uh, once again, you know, with this uh, note of welcoming you to the Orange City, I would definitely like to say that we would like and love to listen to your more stories, more interesting stories. And regarding your next book, yes, of course, we would be, uh, I guess, uh, if Manal, uh, Dr. Manal agrees, we would be the first ones to organize a talk like this on your next book, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. No, You've been you. very, very wonderful. Thank you so much for having me here. And uh, audience, I'm sure you all have enjoyed. But I have loved sitting with Flight Lieutenant Shivali and the way she moderated the session was so wonderful. It's like you gave me my radar, Victor. <laughs> Thank you, everybody present here. And I hope we both did give you some uh, inspiration to be in aviation, whether in the Air Force or in the civil. It's all fun. Inspired us to make people younger. You can <laughs> still do it. Ma'am, you can still do it. Women. Yes, we can take you on those small planes and make you touch the aircraft and make you feel flying. <laughs> yeah, those are beautiful. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, I think the crossword has anybody? Yeah, come. It's there. It's there. Yeah. Uh, once again, thank you so much. I don't have uh, more words, words now to ask anything because I'm sure many of us are clear about so many things. But then also, time is not permitting much, but yes, we can take one or two questions if anybody has. If someone wants to ask one question, then we one or two questions. I want to ask one thing about uh, ATF as a What, what is your question, sir? The uh, aviation uh, turbine fuel, yeah. Actually, jet uh, aircraft, which we flew, it uh, is a kind of a jet kerosene. But, uh, you know, your question relating to this fuel is the pollution or... Yes. 
there, these are specifically gravity fuel where there is certain numbers to each fuel which is there. If they are not correctly there, then icing can take place in the fuel at a cruising altitude. So though aviation kerosene are very uh, not environmental friendly and polluting, Today, uh, Boeing and other big companies are trying to make fuel uh, from sustainable products, which are still not out in the, this thing, the Airbus is just experimenting. Because when we fly at altitudes, there is complete icing there. And if the fuel is iced, then we conk off, our engines are gone. So we need to have that gravity where our fuel is like the fuel you put in the car all the time. But ground is different. Air at levels we fly are all minus 50s. We don't fly anywhere lower. And so the, uh, the aviation turbine actually where we're flying the jets, they call jet kerosene. They're all specific numbered. Jumbo will have a different, Boeing will have a different Airbus, and these are specified where the engineering look into this. We only sign on it, and the engineering will make sure that specific is refueled in your aircraft. So those things are very technical, and they are not easy that we can change them, because they need to go into a lot of testing. Uh, there is definitely the world is requiring to change this to reduce the pollution in the atmosphere. Half the problem we have because of the air traffic increased over the years, there is so much pollution in the atmosphere. And that has to reduce while improving our fuel, this uh, aviation jet fuel. Which age you can go in Air Force. Okay, now Air Force, she will tell, but what I know that NDA, National Defense Academy, you can go after your schooling, after 12th, and Indian Military Academy. Now, when you join the National Defense Academy, how you perform, you are given, whether the Air Force, Army, and Navy. Only the Fighter pilots are the top notch in the National Defense Academy. Indian Military Academy, IMA, you can go after graduation. Even there, you can join Air Force, Army, Navy, depends on your performance. Correct? Bacha, you can join the National Defense Academy, Khadakavasla, after your 12th standard. It depends on your choice and uh, what, which force do you wish to join but then whether you're given that choice will depend on the score that you get in your NDA entrance exam which is conducted by the UPSC yes. all right then you have to appear through an interview which is called as the service selection board interview which is an SSB interview conducted for over about five days and then if you're recommended in that then the merit list the medicals is taken and then based on the marks scored at the in the entrance exam and the SSB, a merit list will be made and then your choice of service will be given. If you have uh, fared in for the Air Force, you will be in. If you've done it for the Navy, you'll be in. If you've done it for the Army, you'll be in. If you wish to join the Indian Air Force after graduation, then also you have an opportunity. You have to undergo through AFCAT, Air Force Common Aptitude Test which is again after graduation, again the process is the same process. But then, for the medical standards, you know, you should not have specs and the rest of the medical standards should be perfect. Welcome, Bacha. My favorite Airbus is the Airbus 3 one nine three two zero and three two one. We were becoming the pilots. We were called Airbus family pilots. 
we were certified to fly this. 319 is smaller, 320 is little bigger. 319 would have 126 passengers, 320 would have 156, and 321 will have 200 passengers. And I would love all three of them. Yeah, all Airbuses I love. They're good to fly, fun to fly. <laughs> yes, ma'am, please. Uh, it took me nearly four years to actually put this book in what print you see today in a haka. So yes, uh, most of the girls in this book are my colleagues. We have all flown together during the flying school days and in the airlines together. Captain Salla Tukral, the first woman I have written, I met her when she was 93 years old. And she gave me all her stories. In fact, at 93, she was so active, she dug out her suit trunk, you know, those old type trunks, and she pulled out her diaries, which she wrote in 35. And she gave them to me. Unfortunately, she's no more. She did not see, and I promised her, Salaji, I will put this in paper, and one day people will read about it. So, you know, um, I've met everybody except Captain Prem Mathur and Durba Banerjee, who they were no more, but their nieces and nephews helped me. Uh, they gave me all information, all the material they had, including the pictures. The other girls are all my buddies. I gave them no choice. I told them, you created once, let us all put them together in a book for India to know women have created how many ones in this field. And so most of them you'll read first mother-daughter pair in the world, in India. Uh, Captain Anila in Flying in 80, and Miria is my new millennium girl. So she's flying 777. They're the first mother-daughter pair in the world. First mother-daughter pair. And both flying the big jets. So these... All of them have been taken from all of them. So it took me time to actually interact. Then I recorded, then I decoded, then made them in stories, got them approved from them that I've not twisted any date or, you know, and then it came into print. Last question. Flying-wise, I wouldn't say. All flying technique remains the same, but there are many differences. There's a different way to land an Airbus and a Boeing. Not major change, but because of the wheel and the drag, so there's a different check we need to give on an Airbus and on a Boeing. Uh, the main difference, I would say, the Airbus, which we started flying, Airbus 320, which came in... Uh, 89, thanks to uh, late uh, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi, our Prime Minister. We were the first in the world to get fly-by-wire technique, the first computerized aircraft in the world. Fly-by-wire technique is different from the Boeing conventional stick where you could feel the aircraft here. My input would go to the computer and the computer would go. So half the time when we started flying, we said, oh, no. We are actually doing only simulator because you could not. But till we got the knack of actually understanding that machine with fly-by-wire technique, like, you know, the computers actually give the input. What you give the input is to the computers. But then once you... Then most of my years I've flown the Airbuses, so I enjoy them, and I really enjoyed them. Uh, Boeing we started, but then the Airbus is what we flew because most of the airlines today fly Airbuses. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you once again, Shivali ma'am, Manisha ma'am. Once again, thank you to the audience present today. Thank you to Mr. Sunil Raisoni. Thank you to trustees and the uh, people here in Chitnavis Center. 
Thank you so much. Would like to uh, request in case if anybody interested can give a video testimonial here so that we can use it for the promotion and we'll upload it on our websites also. It will help us to get uh, more people in knowledge series sessions and to end up in a bigger literature festival in the coming November. So would request if anybody interested to give a video testimonial. Thank you, thank you so much.